Hello and welcome. My name is Lauren Grace and welcome to the Australian Festival of Sound Healing Melbourne Frequencies Getting to Know You series. I'm joined today by Electric Consciousness aka ARIA Award winning music teacher Scott Maxwell who combines modern and ancient healing instruments with cutting edge music production software. Through this combination of old world and new world instruments, Scott is able to create unique harmonies and ultra cosmic frequencies. Yes. From the mellow light tones of the 432 Hertz crystal bowls to the ethereal shadow screams of the Vimana, What's the Vimana? Don't worry, stay with me. We'll find out in just a second. Scott induces trance states to allow your being to travel deep into the world of sonic vibrations. And he's joining me today to talk about, well, what we can expect from him at the Australian Festival of Sound Healing. We're going to talk about what the Vimana is. And I'd like to find out maybe some of his musical influences and how music has changed for him over the years. So Scott, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, thank you. I'm very, very pleased to be here. Thanks. I am too. I love talking about music. I could nerd out about music forever. So why don't we, first of all, find out from you, you know, why music? Why does music set your heart alight and, and get your soul on fire? I, I think um, <clears throat> music, I think music is the common ground that uh, we have as humans. Um, so I think there's no better way to connect with um, you know, on a micro level, connect with ourselves, uh, connect with our, 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 our deepest inner being. And then on a macro level, sort of connect with everybody else um, and, uh, and then connect with the universe around us. So mm -hmm. there's, such, um, there's such an array of, I guess, um, resonance. <laughs> it's funny that I use that word, but with with music and um, how it transcends, how it transcends language um, and transcends culture, it transcends sort of everything. Um, and you know, for me, uh, it's it's music that is at the core of of humanity and at, at the core of of uh, of society. And and I think that that's uh, yeah. That's probably, I mean, that's huge. It's a huge answer, you know. It's like, oh, music <laughs> it, is everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's but funny. I, I, you know, yeah, it really, it really is everything, you know. It's um and and it is, it's everything for me. So um as soon as I discovered music, sort of, you know, everything else in life went on the back burner. Um, and that was quite early um in my uh in in my uh, in my lifetime. So as as a kid, um uh, just uh you know, experiencing music sort of uh, changed my trajectory in life, I guess. So it seems mm. to me that you're sort of living the dream. I mean, when you're talking about music, it's so obvious that it's your passion. You know, you get fired up, you have that smile on your, you start to kind of like flow with your conversation and uh, you know, you're teaching young people how to play music. And then you're also playing music yourself. It sounds like you've set yourself up for uh, a pretty awesome life. Yeah, I guess um, you sort of, uh, uh, a lot of my younger years were based around being a musician and um, playing, um, you know, my first instrument um, and, you know, my main instrument that I've played for over 35 years is the guitar. And um, it was always about getting deeper and, and learning more and more and more about the guitar. And, um, you know, as I learnt about the guitar, you know, I obviously learn about music as well. So um, that was interesting to then take that into, you know, my day job, which was teaching mm. and, um, and to be able to do that, you know, alongside of, of, of playing was absolutely amazing. Um, and, and these days I actually, um, I don't uh, teach normal classroom music anymore. I actually teach teachers how to teach music. So it's a really nice, um, uh, way to leverage um, that idea about how you know the importance of music so that's really cool as well um, you know I've got 20 teachers that are teaching classrooms um, across the region where I live which is the limestone coast in South Australia um, and uh, we're getting into the the, the real little kids so um, wow. at a very young age um, so it's it's uh, it's extremely satisfying so yeah I am living the dream at the moment so yeah loving it 
I love it so much. So in a few minutes, I do want to talk to you about what exactly Hertz music is, and maybe you can give us a little bit of a sample as well. But before that, I'm really interested in kind of finding out a bit about your musical style and how it's sort of evolved over the years, or has it evolved? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess it, it definitely evolved. I mean, it's constantly evolving um, to the point where um, you know, every every time I play is 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 different. Um, every time every time you play, you bring something new to the mix. There's different energies to be feeling. Um, I but I guess on a on a bigger level, um, I you know I got into music when I was uh, when I was a teenager, and played in bands all the way through um, my my twenties and thirties. And I was I was into uh, fast, really fast music and and heavy music as well. That was that was what I was um, really really into, and that's what I was resonating with. Um, and I still listen to it now. You know, I, lo I love it. But um, you know, the style that I was uh, presenting to the world was constantly uh, constantly evolving, um, and it wasn't necessarily exactly what I was listening to. So when um, when I discovered healing instruments. Um, and you know, I'm a relative. I'm a I'm a newcomer. I'm a new kid on the block. You know, I've only really been this um, experimenting um, with with healing instruments since last year. And um, I um, basically have evolved everything that I knew about music and everything that I put into my craft. Um, I'm now able to channel through these instruments, and that it's. Extra, it's so exciting uh, because I really found like I found a home um, and that this, you know, when I play the instruments, I can really feel it, that it's, it's, it's who I am. Um, and I'm able to express the message that I want to express, which is, um, you know, and the message is, is, is music, you know, the message is intertwined with the frequencies that I'm producing. Um, and, and it always has been, um, but with the combination of frequencies that I'm able to get through, like the, you know, the curation of instruments is mm. just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's who I am. And it's, um, I guess that's how I've evolved. Uh, you know, as a musician, you're constantly, you're constantly looking for ways to express yourself. Um, yes. And I find that, uh, you know, this, this has been the, the most amazing amazing way that I've found the most amazing medium to really express um, you know what it is that I have to express yeah so you did mention that you played the guitar for over 30 years now and uh, I kind of alluded to it a little bit in the bio that you've sort of branched out you've, you've talked about different instruments that you're now playing incorporating into your performances into your musical creations but I know that our viewer and myself we're going what the is a vamana so let's talk about that oh. for a second, if we can, Scott. What is a vamana, okay. and where did this instrument come from? So um, the vamana is, and I'll show you what the vamana is while I talk about it. Yes. The vamana is this awesome. Oh wow! Wow. Handheld metal bird. I like to call it. Yeah, it looks like angel um, wings on the top, kind of. Yeah, the movement. it's extremely gorgeous. It's gorgeous, yeah. Yes, uh, the, wow. yes. Um, so the Vamana was like a, a magic carpet. And um, the uh, it's played like a gong. Um, so you can play it with a mallet um, and you can play it with a, a flumey. So that makes sort of whale sounds as well. Um, but the, the most amazing thing about this instrument is that it plays really well with, with a bow. So like a violin bow, mm. um, you can get it sort of, it sort of screams a little bit. And the, 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 the sounds that it makes aren't always the nicest sounds. Um, but, you know, there's a place, I believe really deeply that there's, you know, there's a place uh, in, in all of our, in all of our um, souls for, this, uh, you know, dissonant sound and harmonies that we're not really used to. So, um, you know, to connect us with those parts of us that maybe sometimes we don't want to, we don't want to look at. Um, yes. So I really think that, um, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful instrument to be doing some shadow work and, and look at those parts of ourselves that need the most work. So I really, really love it. And the other thing I love about it is you can move. 
um, when you're playing it. You don't have to sit in one spot. You know, nice. I love to spin it and fling it around my head. And as you do that, um, it actually reacts with the environment. So you're basically moving air in different ways and it sort of, you know, it modulates. So, you know, it's a very, very cool instrument. Wow. So it comes from Italy um, and it comes from a, a company called Grotta Sonora and um, who do the most beautiful um, artistic instruments. Um, and this one was one of their experimental instruments um that i've uh, yes just been lucky to um come across it and uh as soon as i saw it i was like because it sort of reminded me of a guitar in a way and i was like i don't know why but i was like that's it's long. really cool you know <laughs> yeah yeah you can almost and when i first started playing it I, I felt like i was doing some sort of guitar solo um and uh you know it has that same sort of feel about it so um I, uh, yeah, I, it's one of those instruments that's really resonated with me. And um, I, you know, I'd have to say that it really chose me. So there was no, there was no second guessing when I, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, I have to have that. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't even think I checked my bank balance when I bought it. I'm like, yep, <laughs> that'll be these. So, it's an investment. Um, it, well, it, it's, you know, it's almost become part of me now. So, um, yeah. And, you know, this is, uh, it's, it's new, so I'm still learning about it. It's, uh, it's a very complex instrument. It's quite difficult to play. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, very much, it's very much a beast that's, um, yeah, yeah, quite, quite difficult to tame. So I, um, I'm really, really, really loving it. Yeah, so How good. did you get influenced or um, introduced to that? I mean, did, did you see somebody play it and then you thought, oh, that's, that's the right instrument for me? Or were you just looking online um, for obscure instruments and there it was? <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's like I was actually looking online for um, gongs. So I love, I love gongs. I love the way that they evolve and their textures that they... Uh, you know, they can produce these amazing uh, frequencies that, you know, produce out into the universe. But um, the, uh, I, and I saw, I saw it, I saw it um, just on a website and I'm like, what is that? It's beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I clicked on the website and they had this uh, guy sort of playing, playing with it, but um, no one was playing with the bow and the website said it came with a bow and I'm like, well, that'd be interesting. I wonder what that sounds like what that sounds like and I've heard gongs being played with a bow before and it's quite unique and interesting um and I thought well this one's smaller so you're going to get some pretty uh crazy um, high frequency pitches out of it um, mm -hmm. when they sent it out they actually didn't send it out with a, a bow so um I thought maybe it wouldn't work but I went and sourced a, a violin bow and some um and some really sticky rosin and yeah and then that was it um wow yeah, so, so cool. um, really, really cool instrument. Mm. So cool. So I uh, just before we wrap up, I do want to find out, you know, what people can expect to hear from you at the Australian Festival of Sound Healing. But before we kind of, you know, tease them a little bit with that, I do want to ask the question about your Hertz music. So I did reference 432 Hertz, uh, crystal bowls, you know, that you play. So I was wondering if you could talk to me about Hertz music and how it works exactly. And I know that there's different types of, or different levels of Hertz as well? Is there a reason why you play the 432 or do you play other, other Hertz levels? Can you please help yeah, me okay. find the right uh, words for this? Yeah, cool, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Hertz, Hertz is a, um, it's how we measure sound um, and it's the frequency of sound. So um, basically uh, when a sound wave is produced, um, one wave, one sound wave is one hertz. So if something's producing a, um, a sound that has, um, when we talk about 432, um, if something's producing a sound with 432 hertz, it means there are 40, 432 oscillations of a sound wave, basically. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine a sound wave being like a sphere and almost like exploding in a 360 degree direction. Um, and then, you know, it basically it's pushing air molecules um, into your into your eardrums and then our brain produces the perception of sound. 
um, which is really cool. So when awesome. that's when you've got air molecules hitting your your ears at 432 hertz, you're actually your brain's firing at 432 hertz as well, um, and it will do that for any single frequency that you um, that you listen to, um, and it does it during the day as well with everyday sounds. Um, I guess 432 hertz was um, it was sort of like a bit of a research journey for me. I, I didn't even know it was a thing, and then. I came across it um, just researching um, deeper in, in music, sort of, I was getting, because I'm a music teacher, you know, I get caught up in music theory and all that sort of, mm. sort of jargon, jargony sort of talk. And um, so I went, I was researching the opposite side of that and some sort of more mis mystical, uh, you know, ways of, of experiencing music. And I came across a bunch of um, people all around the world that have been listening to 432 Hertz music. And I thought, well, that's really, really interesting. I'd love to hear what it's like. So I, I tuned my guitar to 432. I've got a lot of electronic equipment and I tuned them all to 432. And I, thought, I, was, I really, really liked it. I thought, wow, that's really, really cool. It's so bizarre mm -hmm. that it's so close to what normal tuning is. So normal tuning is 440 Hertz. Okay. Um, so, uh, so there's a difference of this eight hertz, which is interesting in itself as well, because um, there's an electromagnetic um, field in the on the Earth, and it's sort of this wave that reacts between the Earth and the ionosphere. It's called the Schumann resonance, and that's really close to eight hertz as well. So um, that's the difference between normal tuning and 432 hertz. So if you play them both at the same time, you actually get this really cool, um, this this really cool frequency being produced which is at about eight hertz so yes I play both I'm hoping I explained that well I felt like I was just well, going blah 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 blah, blah. no no it definitely made sense that's for sure I do know that there's healing properties or there's like healing sort of effects that you can get right from 432 hertz frequencies is that is that right yeah well like, uh, you know a lot of yeah yeah a lot of people um just find that it's you know they resonate with it better there's a lot of uh there's a lot of um similarities between mathematical measurements on the earth um and those types of things so people but you know really feel like it's a it's a more grounding sort of and a more calming frequency mm. um and you know that has a that has a lot to do with it and i, I and i you know i agree um but, you know, I, but I must say that, um, you know, I also believe that everyone has, everyone resonates at a different frequency. So right. we're not all the same. Um, right. And, uh, you know, and it, your, your frequency could be different to somebody else's frequency. Um, mm -hmm. So what you find really beautiful and calming, somebody else might find a bit unnerving. And I think yeah. there's, you know, so we always have to um, keep, keep that in mind. Um, but I do feel that 4, 432 is, uh, it certainly resonates with, with me and what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually have a didgeridoo that's tuned to 432 hertz as well. Um, it's tuned to a particular note in 432. Um, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful instrument. So that plays well with my other instruments. Um, and I have a planet gong as well. And that planet gong um, is, is basically tuned to um 432 hertz as well so um yeah it's 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 pretty cool so 432 is the reference point for the note which is a the a note um and then every other note just reacts around that um that reference point cool well i know that uh, i did ask you before i hit record whether or not you'd be willing to uh, do a little sample of a crystal bowl are you still open to um to doing that Scott? yeah That'd for be sure really cool actually if you could yep and I have the um, so this this bowl I have here is the um, is the A in uh, 432. So this is actually when I play this, this will actually be the sound of uh, 432 hertz. Um, I'll just hopefully it won't. Um, I'm just going to give it one little um, yeah yeah one little hit just uh, and we'll see if that the microphone picks it up nicely. The 
it's it's so it's it's so beautiful um it's funny in my room here i've got some other bowls and um they they all react to the vibrations in the room so so that that vibration there is 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 432 hertz that's the air molecules sort of expanding and well, they're basically knocking each other side by side and um, reaching the microphone of the computer at 400 at a rate of 432 per second so it's pretty um mm. it's pretty exciting um but i can't help every time i play the bowl and you hear it it's you know what i find um you know about the bowls is that rare rarely in life do we are we able to experience the stillness and we are able to stop and yeah. i really think that um you know the bowls give us the space to be able to stop think check in and um so every time i hear a bowl um you know because my my life was always about playing guitar and playing the next note the next note what's coming right. next so when i play the bowls i'm thinking about what it, what what's happening now thinking about mm. the present i'm not thinking about what's going on coming up next so and when they're played together they make some absolutely beautiful harmonies it's really interesting because I think that the mic didn't pick up exactly what you were able to hear on your end. So I do know that our viewer at home is going to have to go to see the show live to really feel that. But what I did get from that was, you know, the sound and then I could hear the reverberation or, you know, the, the kind of lasting sound that followed from that. And it, it did make me stop and go, you know, listening to the space, listening to the kind of the fallout from from just that initial play, it's very cool. Yeah, yeah, they're they're amazing. So, um, so in my in my show, what I what I tend to do is um, I combine all of these sort of ancient and um, modern instruments uh, together with uh, I've got some DJ production sort of uh, software and hardware. So what I do is um, I know looping's quite popular, so I don't actually quite loop what I do, but I produce it on the fly. So I'm able to create mm -hmm. um, rhythms with drums um, and layer over the top of them, um, all different types of instruments. I'm also able to make sure that, um, you know, when we're talking about resonance um, and particular frequencies, I'm also able to set particular um, tempos. So, you know, the speed of the music, I can make sure is resonating at a particular speed for example, we talk about that Schumann resonance. Um, you know, if you multiply that, um, you know, the 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 speed of that music is 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 quite entrancing. Um, and a lot of our electronic music, that you know, even the trance music, um, is very uh, very similar to that speed. So that's that um, that giving us that space where we can really sort of go deep. Mm. Cool, I love it. Yeah, well, so it that, sounds yeah. to me like no two shows are the same for you, and that. In that case, <laughs> uh, yeah. So no two, no, yeah, definitely no two shows are the same, and that that's the whole thing that drew me to uh, this type of art as well. Is that um, you know the environment's never the same, the air's never the same in 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 any space. You've got difference in in humidity and and, and temperature, um, and the, the the vibrations that people bring to um, to you know performances. Uh, mm. that all changes and that all affects how the air moves around us. So, um, and that influences the energy in the room, influences how I produce my art. And um, yeah, every show is a, definitely a journey, um, <laughs> a deep journey that, um, that I go on as well. You know, I, there's no doubt about it that, um, you know, I'm putting myself into that trance state and right into that zone where um, I feel like, um, you know, I sort of, I, I always think about it because we talk about resonance um, and we talk about everyone resonating at, this, at the same frequency, you know, it's really difficult to produce something that everyone's going to love. But um, I know that when I'm resonating with the music and I'm feeling it, you know, my intention is really like, you know, everyone, oh, come on, you've got to be feeling this. This is amazing. Come on. I hope you can feel what I can feel, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, well, yeah. if anything, they would definitely feel your heart and your, you know, your intention behind it. That's that's without a doubt. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. you will be playing in the Australian Festival of Sound Healing, the Melbourne Frequencies um, 
Festival that's going to be happening on November 6th and November 7th. I do know that you do quite a lot on Instagram. You've got social media as well. Well, I guess that is Instagram. It all wraps up under social media. So how can people find out a little bit more about you, Scott, if they're not able to wait until November to hear more from you, no pun intended? Yeah, sure. So I um, I have an um, a Instagram page that um, I like to keep quite active. Um, it's called electric consciousness and that's electric underscore consciousness um all in lowercase um and on there i like to um you know i like to offer these really small minute minute uh videos of what i do basically um particularly the acoustic stuff so i go out into i go out into the environment into these beautiful places because i live in the in the country and i can get away from cars and the traffic noise um and uh, just create this content just so that you know, the, the people scrolling through their feeds can sometimes, you know, get so caught up in scrolling. Here's a, mm. here's a video to just remember to stop, have a think, remember the world is a beautiful place, recenter yourself. Um, and so that's sort of, you know, I love doing that. And that keeps me creative and it keeps me um, searching for the next way that I, I'd like to express myself as well. So, but if anyone wants to see, you know, any of the instruments I've talked about, they're all there and the Vimana yeah, as well, uh, all there on the, on the Instagram. So um, that'd be great if uh, some people want to pop over and have a look and experience what that's like. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Scott, and I uh, look forward to seeing you at the festival. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you.